Could you explain to us some of the environmental damage that is coming from this sand mining, both legal and illegal? Sure, absolutely. So let me let me step back um, and just give you a quick primer on, on where that sand actually originates from in the first place. Mm -hmm. I'll sort of help you picture it. So basically, so sand can be, the, the word sand can refer to small pieces of anything, any hard substance. So sand can be, you know, flint or chert, it can be crushed up seashells, anything. But most of the sand in the world and the sand that we human beings use the most by far is, is quartz sand, uh, which is a very hard sand. And it's, it's the most, like I said, the most, com uh, most common kind of sand, estimated about three quarters of all the world's sand is quartz. Mm -hmm. So where does that stuff come from? It's basically little tiny pieces of mountains, right? What happens is you've got mountains and, you know, other geologic formations, rock outcroppings and stuff that get eroded, right? The wind and the rain are constantly chipping away at, at those things and breaking off little pieces, little grains. And then the rains wash those grains down the mountainsides and then the rains collect into rivers and carry that sand with them all the way out, you know, across the land to where the rivers meet the sea. So the sand gets deposited, those rivers are like dropping sand all along that course. So sand accumulates in the river bed, at the bottom of the river, on the river banks, the sides of the river. Over time, those rivers change course, right? So you'll have sand left behind in what used to be a river bed, but is now dry land. And of course, the places where the rivers meet the sea, which is beaches. That's why you mm -hmm. have some sand on beaches. So we get that sand from all those places. We mine it from on the land, we mine it from the water, we mine it from beaches, we mine it from the oceans and lakes. The easiest way, like you said, to get it, and probably the most common way is rivers, right? It's really easy to do. You just put a big old barge uh, out in the middle of a, of a river, drop a pipe down to the bottom of the river, just suck up all the sand, pile it onto your barge, and then you can take it wherever you wanna go. It's very easy to do, it's quite cheap. Sand is clean, nicely sorted, but it can cause massive environmental damage, right? So first thing is, obviously, if you've just vacuumed up the entire bottom of a river, well, you've just annihilated the habitat of whatever was living down there, right? Any fish or frogs or, you know, plant life, whatever was down there, their habitat is now gone. Mm -hmm. Secondly, when you do that, you also stir up whatever other mud and, you know, muck and silt was down there, and that clouds up the water, right? All that stuff, you know, flows up into the water and gets suspended in the water, and that can actually suffocate uh, whatever's living in the water, whatever fish are swimming around, freshwater mammals like porpoises and crocodiles can literally suffocate in that polluted water. Third thing is, all those pollutants, all that, uh, the you know, the muck in the water blocks sunlight from getting through the water down to plants living under the water surface, which need sunlight just like regular mm -hmm. plants do. So that kind of mining, that kind of uh, river and, and lake mining has caused huge environmental damage all over the world. It's wiped out mangrove beds, coral reefs, seagrass beds, uh, done slaughtered huge numbers of, of fish and uh, mm -hmm. Reptiles and even the birds that live on fish, you know, is, is if you kill off all the fish in a big chunk of river or lake, all the birds are going to starve to death, the mm. birds that used to eat those fish. C could you give um, some examples of places where this has happened? Sure. Well, it's a big issue all in many parts of India. I mean, uh, the Yamuna River, for instance, which is the river that goes through New Delhi. It's a big uh, river. It's been heavily, heavily mined, and it's been... Uh, it's really been catastrophic. I mean, in, in theory, it's illegal to mine sand from there because there's been so much damage, but there's so much corruption in the system mm -hmm. that a lot of it's still going on. So there's been huge, you know, die offs of, of, of birds and, uh, and fish all throughout India. Um, the Yangtze River in China, which is a huge, extremely important river um, that flows into Shanghai and provides drinking water for something like 400 million people. Really? Um, they wow. were mining, yeah. So much sand was being mined out of the Yangtze. Um, it was causing riverbanks to collapse mm -hmm. and fouling up shipping and, you know, doing other kinds of harm. So the, 
Eventually, the authorities like, banned that as well, but it also still continues illegally. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and in lots of other in lots of other places. I mean, in some places, it gets so bad that it leads to it leads to violence. For instance, in in uh, Kenya, in this uh, this area about an hour outside of capital uh, of the capital Nairobi, there's this uh, agricultural area where sand miners have been digging a lot of sand out of the rivers to go and sell to developers in Nairobi, which is growing really fast. And they've dug out so much sand that the water table has actually dropped and the local farmers are losing their drinking water and the water for their crops. And they've actually, so the the farmers have basically gone to war with the sand miners. A bunch of people were killed in fighting between those two groups a few years ago. That's crazy. It, it, um, It is a great reminder of the just complexity and balance of an ecosystem uh, mm-hmm. because you could you, you could be naive enough to think well i could just come in here and suck out a bunch of sand i mean it's not going to affect the fish right it's certainly not going to affect the birds right but maybe it could even go so far as it affects the drinking population for a city and then the yep. second third fourth order effects down from there are you know incalculable essentially absolutely like in there's Kenya, another... it's ending in warfare <laughs> you know yeah yeah, mm. there's another uh, and there's another way that it can have really terrible impacts, which is um, which is coastal erosion. OK, mm. so what happens is, you know, there are a lot of coastlines all around the world, right? Beaches, uh, river <coughs> deltas and so on. They're always eroding right in the natural course of things. Tides and winds are always sweeping away some of that land, some of that sand that's along Mm -hmm. the coast, washing it out to sea. Now, in the normal course of things, usually that uh, that erosion is counterbalanced by, among other things, rivers, right? Like I said, rivers are always bringing fresh sand, sand. Mm -hmm. right? So there's a kind of rough equilibrium that gets established. But now what's happening in some places is, A, we've built a lot of dams on those rivers that block sand from, from getting through. B, because of sand mining, we're extracting, taking so much sand up out of those rivers that they are no longer replenishing the coastline. So natural erosion is continuing, but natural replenishment has stopped. Mm. And one of the places where this is really uh, getting to be a serious crisis is in the Mekong River Delta in Vietnam. Okay. So the Mekong, you know, the Mekong River is one of the biggest, most important rivers in the world. The delta where it hits the sea is this incredibly rich agricultural area. It produces something like half the rice that's consumed in all of Southeast Asia. Wow. Not just Vietnam. Yeah, it's okay. crazy. That area is disappearing. The Mekong Delta is shrinking at the rate of a football field, like a soccer pitch worth of land is disappearing every day. Wow. Yeah, and the reason for that is because the Mekong is no longer, it's eroding, but there's the yep. Mekong is no longer bringing in enough fresh sand to, to, to maintain it. Yeah, I mean, the replacement rate of sand is, is in the, what, hundreds of thousands, millions of years? Uh, well, yeah, to, uh, I mean, it, you know, it's, a, it's stone and it moves in geological time. So to create sand and to... Yeah. And, uh, so yeah. we, we can't we can't be like oh well this is actually sustainable sand mining because it's I'm only taking a ton a year and a 1.1 tons is coming back naturally it's, it's not like that. Well, I mean there is such a thing as sustainable sand mining, and mm. you know there are a lot of places where they're it's done more carefully, uh, and you know if you hit the balance right you can keep doing it for a long time. I mean, we've okay. been, you know, there's sand mining in every country in the world in, you know, in places like the UK and Britain and uh, US and Canada, where, where we live, it's a lot more closely monitored. And that's why there are, there's definitely uh, environmental problems that come along with sand mining in, in Western countries, but in general, it's much less of a problem. And one of the reasons is because we have a, we're just, we have a better system of regulations and enforcement of those regulations. Oh, it's interesting you say that. I, I was under the impression that 
any sand mining was inherently um, going to come at an unsustainable cost. And it was just the case that in countries like maybe Australia or, or the United Kingdom, like you mentioned, they've just measured the trade off as being sustainable in their eyes, right? Whereas in places like in India and um, Kenya, and I'm sure in Vietnam and many other places that you document in the book, it's being done at a, you know, egregiously unsustainable level. But uh, it sounds like if there is such a thing as sustainable sand mining, then there's a possibility that it is a, like we do have the capacity to continue creating roads throughout Africa, giant well, high rises, like there's a lot. Yes of and no. There, right? Yes and no. Yeah. It's a really good question. Um, and it's a bit complicated to answer. So part of the reason, part there's one of the reasons that, that sand mining is, it causes fewer problems in the, in the developed world is because we're not using nearly as much of it per capita anymore because we've built our cities, our roads, our dams, our airports, you know, we built them sort of gradually over the last 100, 150 years. We still mm -hmm. use a hell of a lot of sand, obviously, right? We're still building new stuff out of concrete all the time, but the amounts that we're using are more or less, you know, plateaued. The big difference is in places like India, China, Indonesia, Brazil, these developing countries where the economies are growing really fast, yeah. They're using, they're having to create from almost from scratch, you know, cities for millions and millions of people overnight. So, I mean, what's happening there is, is the same thing that happened in, in the Western world a hundred years ago, right? More and more people are leaving the countryside, leaving the, you know, the rural life and coming into cities where, there, where there's more economic opportunity. But whereas in the West, that happened, you had millions of people moving out of the countryside over the course of decades. Today, in today's world, you have hundreds of millions of people moving out of the countryside over the course of just a few years, mm -hmm. right? We're talking right now, uh, something like 90 million people every single year move into cities more. In other words, cities are growing by, we're adding the equivalent of nine New York cities to the planet. Mm -hmm. every single year that is not sustainable yeah true that's a very good way to put it while our in the west you as you could say um progression was over 100 150 years the developing world which have significantly higher populations are urbanizing at a 10x rate that we were and therefore exactly. it's simply a case of um of time versus demand you know, and exactly. Yeah. I and mean, also scale, you know, because I mean, there's, there's a, over a billion people in China alone, <laughs> the whole population of, of Western Europe and the U S and Canada together is less than that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, unbelievable. So it's, we've never, it's never been the case that this many people that have been, uh, you know, using the, the products that we make sand for, right? Yeah, We've had yeah. this many people living in apartments and driving cars and working in offices. That's a brand new thing just of the last 20 years or so. Mm. This takes me a bit off the, the course that I